On October 19, Kelly Monroe left an investigator with the Georgia Secretary of State's office, takes a look at a new voting machine being tested at a polling site in Conyers, Ga. David Goldman app Parsippany, NJ, halfway into his Saturday night rally, after telling about 200 fellow Democrats that Republicans were crushing the dreams of the middle class, gubernatorial hopeful Phil Murphy did something no nervous candidate would dare. He broke into, come on, come on, now, touch me, babe warbled Murphy, channeling Jim Morrison and shaking his hips. Democrats were running a joyful campaign, he explained they're trying to scare people to vote for them, and we came from the school where we're inspired to vote for people. Come Tuesday, both parties expect Murphy, a 60-year-old former Goldman Sachs banker and ambassador, to easily defeat Lieutenant Gubb, Kim Wadanya R and put Democrats Y in control of New Jersey. Outgoing Gov. Chris Christie, once one of the most popular figures in Republican politics, is so unlike that New Jersey's election has become an afterthought to the Banburner races in Virginia. But the race here is one of dozens that parties and outside groups have flooded to test messaging, show off clout, and, for Democrats, exploit the unpopularity of President Trump. In Washington, Democrats are hoping to secure control of the state Senate, and with it the entire state government. In Maine, progressives are trying to force the expansion of Medicaid coverage with a popular ballot measure. In Trump's own New York City, Mayor Bill de Blasio is trying to frame an expected landslide victory as a rebuke of the president. The best reason to vote on November 7 is because of what happened last year on November 8, de Blasio told the congregation at the First Baptist Church of Crown Heights on Sunday morning. Millions of people didnt vote, and they woke up the next morning to a rude awakening. Very rude. I think you know what I mean. The New Jersey race is taking place on favorable Democratic turf. Just 41% of the state backed Trump for president. Less than 20% of voters say they view Christie favorably, a fact Murphy has exploited by slashing the Christie Guadagna administration in debates and attack ads. On Saturday, as Guadagna stumped across the southern part of the state, even some Republican voters grimaced at the name of the president and their governor. At a campaign office in Burlington County, volunteers had pasted up images of Ronald Reagan, the Nixon family and even the villain from Ghostbusters too. The only visible evidence of the Republican governor and president was a clutch of bumper stickers. Catherine Colonna, 38, a candidate for the township committee, said that she is proud of her ticket but working to separate herself from the president. Let me just say in biracial, an HES made some remarks that I would NT be comfortable repeating at my family's dinner table, she said. Wadanya, who's closing out her campaign with a busy bus tour, has also distanced herself from the party's more toxic figures. On Saturday, she stumped alongside former Governor Christy Todd Whitman, who echoed her attacks on Murphy as an out-of-Dutch banker who would turn New Jersey into a sanctuary state. At each stop, the Republicans predicted that independents and Democrats would hear that message and come around. I was down by 17 points with a week to go, Whitman told voters in Burlington County, recalling her upset 1993 campaign. Kim's only down by 14 The New Jersey race is one of many in which Republicans have grabbed onto sanctuary city status as a way to portray Democrats as weak on crime. A widely seen campaign flyer on Long Island warns that a Democratic candidate for Nassau County Executive would kick open the doors to MS-13 gang members. In several races, Republican voters have received mail urging them to head to the polls by invoking National Football League players who've protested racial injustice by taking a knee during the national anthem. Democrats, who had Republicans pick off local offices and state legislative races during Barack Obama's presidency, have counterattacked with a combination of Trump bashing and careful investments. In New York, where Westchester County Executive Rob Bastrino is seeking a third term, Democrats have run ads linking him to Trump, while Trump donor Robert Mercer has put $1 million toward an effort to defend him. The Democratic National Committee, under fire and underfunded because of the lingering bitterness of the 2016 primaries, has gone for broke by investing hyper-locally. 
there has been little national investment in Utah, where voters will elect a replacement for former Congressman Jason Chaffetz, and Republican John Curtis is favored to win. But an Every Zip Code Counts program, started this year, has led to investments in the race for mayor of Charlotte in Fayetteville, North Carolina, and in Albuquerque, an increasingly Democratic city where low off-year turnout has often benefited Republicans. The Republican National Committee, flush with cash, has been playing at the same level. The party has invested more than $500,000 in Pennsylvania's off-year elections, where a small electorate will decide whether to retain and elect a number of judges and mayors. To local Democrats' consternation, the state and national GOP investments may end up doubling their own. But both parties, along with a constellation of outside groups, have dumped money into a battle for one seat in Washington State Senate. As of Friday, more than $8.5 million had been spent by Democratic nominee Manka Dingra, Republican nominee Jill Young Lee England and outsiders. Tom Steyer, a hedge fund multimillionaire who is running national TV ads arguing for Trump's impeachment, has put $250,000 behind Dingra Cock Industries has given $25,000 to England. Democrats, nervous about Virginia and eager to reverse their Obama-era losses, have grown increasingly confident about a Washington state win. A victory there would put them in charge of every branch of state government. A win the same day in New Jersey would increase the number of Democratic trifectas from six to eight. Local Democrats credit the Democratic National Committee, which helped fund a digital advisor, for helping them find old England tweets that have been pivotal to the campaign. It's a cautionary tale for candidates, said Washington State Democratic Party Chair Tina Podlodovsky. Before you run for office, you might want to strip your Twitter feed of pro-Trump, anti-choice stuff. Some of progressives mosted races are even lower on the ballot. Democratic Socialists of America, a left-wing group that has surged in membership since the election, is working to elect as many allies as possible in city council contests from New York to Minneapolis. And in Maine, progressives have thrown their backs into the passage of Question 2, a measure that would accept the Affordable Care Act's Medicaid expansion after multiple vetoes by Gov. Paul Lepage are people are seeing that the only way to get stuff done and put points on the board while Trump is president is to take it to the voters directly, said Jonathan Schleifer, the executive director of the Fairness Project, which helped put together Maine's campaign. You don't need control of Congress. You can act.